Hey you guys, it's Britt. Today we're here to read the letters that I received from former Dad Challenge podcast subscribers, sharing their opinions, their experience, how their sort of, you know, opinions have changed over time. I figured that this would be an interesting uh, video just because it's not only my opinion, but it's echoing what other people that have been subscribers or were subscribers are feeling as well. So if you're interested, please keep watching. First thing I want to say before I read this first email is um, obviously I did receive full permission to share these from both of the individuals before beforehand. But I also want to say something that I've noticed just from talking to you guys on Instagram or other people that have emailed me, I think the combination of Josh being a former pastor and not being a pastor now really plays into how people perceive him online because what, what it seems like to me is the fact that it's so widely known that he was a pastor will play in his favor early on because it gives people this sense of, especially people that like grew up in the uh, church and they might still go to church, they look at him as someone who they can trust and they can, um, you know, to a certain degree, I'm not saying fully trust, but it's someone that they can connect with. And, oh, he was a pastor, like he's doing great things on YouTube now. It's almost this like skewed sense of who he is. But I also think that it's a double-edged sword because people who have left the church also see through his shit early on and they see that he is using manipulative language and the way that he talks to certain subscribers versus others is different. If you're a member, if you're part of his Patreon, you get special treatment versus how he treats just you know, all the normal people. With this, I don't want to fully single him out because other YouTubers have been guilty of this as well. But since we're talking about him in this video, I will talk about him. But treating people that are paying extra for an increased level of access to you are treated better than others. And I know that everyone has their own opinion on YouTube member programs and Patreon and all the things. I've said for the longest time, I don't want to ever allow someone to feel like they have increased access to me or like I should have a special type of connection with them because they're paying me on my YouTube channel. I've just always felt like that can sometimes unintentionally lead to having inappropriate parasocial relationships with some people um, because there are some people who will expect special treatment because they are one of your patrons. And don't get me started on the different levels on Patreon. If they're like a top tier Patreon member and they're paying you $50 a month, if they're paying you 50 bucks a month over on Patreon and they're like your top tier, they are absolutely going to expect something that one of your you know usual YouTube subscribers is not going to expect. And that could be unintentionally or it could be intentionally. But at some point in time, um, you can't treat everyone the exact same for an extended period of time. You're gonna, you know, maybe favor the people that are your members a little bit more than your other subscribers. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. But I'm gonna do another video on things that I kind of notice after the fact after not supporting him anymore. And one of those things I'll just tell you guys now because it's really simple to explain. I noticed how he always said that he wasn't doing YouTube for the money. But then when I think back, he started Patreon and his YouTube memberships very early on. Um, You know, and some people might look at that as completely harmless, but if you're truly not doing YouTube for the money, then I feel like why did Patreon and YouTube member programs get rolled out so quickly? 
if you're really enjoying your content and you enjoy filming and making videos and connecting with people that are in your community, um, I don't think that that equates to rolling out Patreon so, so quickly and, um, you know, sending people shitty keychains and stupid stickers. I mean, how about give them actual like good content that is worth the fee that you're charging nobody wants a chachi sticker nobody wants a i love dad bods keychain like his merch is a whole nother conversation we could do a separate video on that i've always thought that his merch was really cheesy and cheap and corny and if someone gave it to me for free i still would not uh wear it or use it and I thought that the whole time through, I'm very critical of YouTubers and merch. There's not many that I've come across that I would pay for anything that they're selling just because I, I don't know, like I don't need your face on a t-shirt and I don't need any of your sayings on a keychain. That's just not the way that I roll. And it's also another reason why I don't know if I'll ever come up with merch. And if I did, it would be something very, very understated and uh something that would probably just you know blend into the rest of your wardrobe nothing crazy but i've always thought that like hmm so you're not here for money and back then he was still working full time of course now we know that he's become a full-time youtuber just like the thing that he said he wouldn't do this whole time but to roll out patreon so quickly to me that was if you want to call it like an early red flag, um, that should have been a red flag for me. And it's something that I thought of after the fact, along with several, several other things. But before I babble, let's read this, uh, these two emails, because they're kind of long. So this person starts out by saying, I wanted to send this and not comment it because I knew I'd probably get virtually attacked or I'm just that ashamed. I've been thinking about this a lot lately. I've watched and been stuck to your channel for years. Your videos about Josh especially are so dead ass right, especially this last one. I myself have watched a lot of his videos. I don't know if you'd even call it hate watching because I've laughed at him and totally agreed with him at times. The last video you did and you asked about what his wife or, um, kids will think and i believe he used to be a pastor at a huge church that he is actually more like a cult leader to them talking about his followers he knows how and what to say to get people to follow him blindly and that's what i'm saying i think that the um his experience as a pastor and him being on youtube i think that those coexist in more ways than I thought of initially. I legit feel like I'm trying to get out of a cult. His wife, kids, and friends are fully in the cult, and that's why his wife and older older kid probably don't say shit, um, besides the fact that it's paying for a lot. He has a paywall, for God's sake. Merch? Sorry, I get annoyed. And I think that's a good point. People are willing to tolerate a lot of things when there is money rolling in, and I think that that's, it, it, it also goes back to how you can tell if someone has true integrity or just a fake facade of integrity is what do they do when money is involved? Do they, um, you know, do they push the boundaries because it's paying a lot of money? Do they turn a blind eye to toxic behavior because money is rolling in? Do they justify bullying because money is rolling in? Do they early on say how much they hate T-channels and then they're spreading unfounded rumors about someone's sex life because money is rolling in? I think that so many of these things um, ring true for Josh and you know, even though I obviously don't reside with him, thank God, I can say that a lot of times people will deal with more than what they should um, because there is so much money rolling in and it's obviously paying him well at this point. As I said, he did become a full-time YouTuber 
and I think there for a while he might have been working one day a week but YouTube is full-time for him as of the last several months and I also think that's really interesting that so many people are seeing problems with him over the last several months and that's when he became a full-time YouTuber so to me those two um, happening at the same time tells me that his full-time YouTube venture is probably going to fizzle out very quickly and I don't think it's just going to fizzle out. I think it's going to come to a um, very uh, graphic halt and probably blow up into a million pieces before it's all over. But um, it, it's all because of him and his actions and his words and his uh, toxicity and the way that he treats people and the um, you know, straight out disrespect that he shows, um, you know, other YouTubers, it's, um, disgusting. There's just no way that his presence on YouTube to me equates to a long, steady career as, as a YouTube creator. I just don't see it happening. And, um, I'm not even being a pessimist. I'm just looking at what's happening and realizing that it's, you know, turned from a uh, little bit of a circus here and there to a full-blown, you know, Jerry Springer dumpster fire very, very quickly. The email continues. Um, I've also had a lot of issues at different churches since I was five all the way into my late 20s. I gave up. I refuse to try again or pretend I know for sure what happens after this life. Anyways, that's not the point. I guess I'm asking you for help because I thought you guys were actually friendly at one point. I use that term very lightly. Maybe acquaintances is a better word or colleagues. I cringe at a lot of what he says and I do laugh at things too. Am I in a DCP cult? And then she closes her message just by saying that a lot of us that are speaking against Josh, um, you know, we're, we're right, at least in her opinion, and there's reason to talk about him, and there's reason why these videos are coming out in such close succession, and so many people are noticing the same issues with him. So I want to address the, um, the fact of were we friendly, were we not friendly. I think of Josh as a former colleague that I was cordial with. So like I said before, I will talk to people that talk to me. And if you respond to me, I'll respond to you. And that's the way a two-way conversation will go. Um, when it came to early on, Josh did to me what he did to a lot of others. He contacted me with some uh, tech suggestions. And then after realizing what type of content I was making, you know, I had talked about the mica thing and a couple other commentary things while I was doing my makeup and then he offered to for me to join this like multi-channel network that he was starting. I found it very weird. I totally avoided it because I was not interested in becoming part of any network. I have a full-time job. I didn't even have becoming a full-time YouTuber on my radar at all. I just wanted to talk about whatever I wanted to talk about and build my little community organically. I don't need to be a network in a network with other people. Um, if you like me, you like me. And if you don't, that's okay too. Um, but I wasn't interested in that at all. Um, and you know, early on, like a lot of other people, I agreed with his message. I agreed that he was calling Micah out because many of us saw Micah and what she did and we didn't like it. And it, I thought that it was great that he was, um, you know, calling her out. Because I was working full time and trying to, you know, make videos as often as I could for my own channel, I wasn't watching a lot of his stuff. He was starting to talk about other influencers that I didn't really know who they were. Um, once in a while I would check in and catch a video here or there, but I was, you know, picking up pace on my own channel and that's what I wanted to focus on along with working full time and you know handling things at home and also making sure that all of my free time wasn't consumed by YouTube and Instagram because it's always been really important to me too um but but time would go on and we would talk sometimes behind the scenes it was very cordial um you know I I think that um you know there were a couple times where I 
ran things by him because he had more experience um, with some things to do with YouTube than I did. And once in a while, we might, you know, get a little snarky with Brianna K. I talked about that. Like, I, um, because he created it, I would refer to Brianna as bits of, bits of bitch or whatever a couple times in DMs. And to me, that's completely harmless. I don't understand why that would even be a, a point of discussion. He's the one that created the term. I mirrored it because he created it. And, um, you know, that is an example to me of actually being snarky, coming up with a little bit of a nickname. You know, I always thought that the Aloha Pineapple thing was funny because early on it was um, harmless. And then he continued to cover these influencers, Brianna included, and he stepped into a territory that I did not like. The first thing that happened was he allowed Jordan Cheyenne to absolutely steamroll him on his own channel. Um, it was supposed to be this great interview and she just totally like, you know, gave him the opportunity and he was like uh, borderline flirting with her. It was a disaster. Then after that, he took advantage of the Gabby Petito situation. And when I gave him criticism about Gabby Petito, in my opinion, he allegedly lied to me because he said that the funds were going somewhere fantastic and I never saw proof of it. And like any other YouTuber, you either show me proof or I don't fucking believe you. Like, I'm not an idiot, so don't treat me like I'm an idiot. Um, and as far as, you know, oh, nobody has to say anything. He was getting a lot of kickback about exploiting Gabby Petito and doing distasteful thumbnails and all of these conspiracy theory videos. Um, and I think that it would have made a lot of people happy to see that he was actually um, making a donation like he said he was going to. Before the Jordan Cheyenne thing, I will also say another red flag that I had was when he said that Love Meg's vagina um, or her cleaner smelled like vagina or whatever. That, when I heard that, and I actually talked to a couple of subscribers behind the scenes back then, and they were also DCP followers, and I was like, am I, you know, crazy for being absolutely floored and disgusted that he would actually say that? Like, it's not funny. It's not uh, snarky. It's not comedy. It's not even dark comedy. It's just disgusting. So either way, there were a few things that happened over that period of time, like last summer into last early fall. Um, and by the time the Gabby Petito stuff happened, I was just completely done. And after that is when we get into the docking and the just really, really continuing to be more and more cruel with his commentary and you know, exaggerating people's teeth on thumbnails and making these ugly faces. To me, it just started to snowball and I always looked at it like I got out in the right time. Um, so either way, if you guys know DCP in my history, you probably have seen all my other videos and you'll know exactly kind of what led to my decision to be transparent with my subscribers and say, I can no longer support this. I'm out and here's why. So that's the end of her email. Let's read the other one. This email touches on his um, intimidation of subscribers, which has been a common conversation as well. So the email starts out by saying, hi, Britt. I have honestly been wanting to reach out to you for a while, but Josh had me worried. I was worried to subscribe to you, like your videos, and comment. I know Josh likes to publicly call people out and having PTSD, my mind over worried. However, I'm done hiding and I thought that I would share my experience of him. Like a lot of, and first of all, before I go into the rest of this, the fact that someone has someone else worried to subscribe to a fellow YouTuber is fucking unhinged. That's not normal behavior. It's not okay. I've always said, I'm never going to be here to tell people to pick sides. No way. I'm not hanging out in other comment sections looking for, oh, who's over here leaving a comment so I can get angry. If you subscribe to me and you subscribe to 
someone that doesn't like me or someone who does content exactly the opposite of me, that's okay. I am not here to tell anyone to pick a side. If you subscribe to me, that's all I care about. If you watch my videos once in a while, that's all I care about. Why in the hell would I be concerned about, oh, if you're a subscriber of mine, you're only allowed to subscribe to me. That is egomaniac, like unhinged, fucking derailed behavior. She continues by saying, um, like a lot of others, I was a huge fan of his for a while. I was subscribed and joined his channel, bought him coffees on Ko-Fi or, you know, it's like K-O-F-I, etc. In the beginning, a year ago, I thought he was hilarious and so relatable. I think a lot of us were there. I sent him a gift from Amazon and thought it was awesome. He liked it. He became my favorite YouTuber. As his channel slowly got bigger, he became more arrogant. I would cringe, but I turned a blind eye. I think a lot of us did, you know, here and there at least. Then he had a secret Santa gift exchange for subscribers who signed up. I definitely could not afford the $50 secret gift, but I found a way to make it work. I was so excited to be a part of it. I mailed my gift out and made sure the person got it. I did not receive mine. It wasn't the end of the world, just disappointing. Josh offered to send people something if they didn't receive their gift. He never did. Now, taking this person's word at face value, um, I can see him offering to do something, but I can also see him um, not following through on his promise because he has a history of doing that. This is just completely not okay. If you are hosting a giveaway or a gift exchange or Secret Santa or whatever it is that you're doing, you are the owner of that program. You are the owner of that gift exchange. So it's up to you to make sure that everybody is happy and satisfied when it's over. If you're gonna host something like that and you're gonna come back and say, oh, if you didn't get it, I'm gonna send you something, fucking send them something that day, dude. Go to the post office, go to the store. All you have to do is buy someone a gift card. You could get them a coffee cup at Starbucks. There are a million things that could have been sent out. Send them a gift card and a coffee cup. Go to the fucking post office, ship it out, and make sure that they receive it. That is such a small, minute little thing. And at this point, if this was holiday 2021, he was already doing YouTube full time. So I don't want to hear that, oh, you're working full time, you're running all around, like all this kind of stuff. You were put in that position by these subscribers and you said you were going to send them something and didn't. Shocking. So it continues by saying, I also had my name show up on his spinning wheel thing. Never received that either. Again, not a big deal. Just getting more and more annoyed with his bullshit. So this is, this is the other thing, like you can't sit there and start all of these different things where you're trying to give stuff away and do raffles and giveaways and subscriber appreciation stuff if you're not going to follow through with it. Just don't do any of that because clearly you cannot keep track of jack shit and all that it does is leave subscribers with broken promises and they feel like they weren't worth your time, your energy, or your attention to the issue. Everything is about how many subscribers do I have? How much money am I making? Go join my Patreon. How many views is this getting? Go share it on Twitter. It's all always about Josh. It's, it's always about how, how am I going to become more wealthy off the backs of these people? My opinion. So uh, the email continues by saying he became so much misogynistic. I couldn't handle it. I was finding myself disgusted watching his videos. Now when he started exploiting Gabby Petito, that was it. I was done right there that second. So absolutely disgusting. It made me sick to my stomach. And I think a lot of us were there when the Gabby stuff happened. You know, there were some red flags leading up to that point. But once he got on that train, I think a lot of us were just done. I unsubscribed from all of his channels, went through every single video and deleted all my likes and my comments. I was a 
I was ashamed I followed him for so long. Damn, he is toxic. I've really been enjoying your videos on him as well as your other ones. I'm glad you're calling him out. Thanks for all your great videos. You're doing fantastic. And she um, signed her name. So here is the thing. Um, this gets me really angry because not only is it the dropped balls when it comes to this secret Santa thing and then the stupid spinny wheel, he got rid of that thing. I, you know, let's be real. Nobody wanted your fucking keychains, dude. But I do think that it's funny that he, uh, stopped doing that. Um, so whatever, you know, one last thing for him to worry about, I guess. But the thing with, um, Gabby Petito, and this was an argument I heard a lot from his fans, was, oh, well, he can cover true crime. Nobody said that um, he, you know, isn't allowed to cover true crime. There's a difference between covering true crime and exploiting it. So if you're going to do one or two videos full of facts, full of evidence on a case that either has gone to trial or is close to going to trial, that's the problem when these true crime channels pop up and they cover cases that are unfolding, it usually leads to like 30 videos full of conspiracy theories. And that's exactly what happened with him and Gabby Petito. So it's not so much the problem of him wanting to explore a new um, genre on YouTube. It's the fact that it was so clear that he was just exploiting it and doing these really distasteful thumbnails. Like there was a thumbnail where it was someone's hand coming out of the ground, like grabbing for a bag of chips or something, um, just full of really, really useless conspiracies. And I gave other creators criticism too. I didn't like any of the um, exploitation that was going on when it came to Gabby Petito. I didn't like it. Whether or not there was a lot of AdSense or a little bit of AdSense involved in it, you're using a girl that lost her life to domestic violence in order to gain subscribers and views. And um, sometimes a lot of AdSense like Josh did. So to me, you know, it was very clear in between him rolling out Patreon and YouTube member programs so soon, and then we go on to the uh, Gabby Petito stuff. It's very clear what he's here for. He's quit his full-time job. He's doing YouTube full-time. He's exploiting anything he gets his little hands on. Um, you know, he did a another throwing conspiracies at the wall video about the tragedy in Texas. And at this point in time, his bad behavior no longer surprises me. And once you're a YouTuber where you behave badly and it's not even surprising to a lot of people, that is where you are into some dangerous territory because, um, you know, that's kind of like a without a crystal ball going back to her she behaves badly and nobody is surprised. It's almost expected from her and that is not a good place to be on YouTube. So either way, I did want to share these with you guys. Um, I did get a couple others on Instagram, but I couldn't find them. I thought that these two um, kind of covered, you know, a lot of the concerns of what I was getting from a lot of people. Um, but I did want to just kind of lift their voices and share their experiences just so it's not all about me. Um, but either way, for now, if you like the video, please leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.